Viewer discretion is advised. Seven is going to be 275 Zebra Robert William. 275 Zebra Robert William. We're going to be CVS right here, top third in Jefferson parking lot. You got a license registration proof of insurance on you, my man? I do not. You don't have a license at all? Okay. I'm traveling. I don't need one, do I? What do you mean you're traveling? I mean, I'm not driving for commerce. Do I need a license for that? A driver's license? Oh, and I'm not driving. You are driving. I'm not making any money. Huh? Maybe Honey, just go ahead and have you sit in the car, okay? What is it? Just have you sit in the car, huh? Well, I'm well the only reason I'm behind the wheel is because because she was feeling dizzy. We were at my mom's. Eight, nine, ten, eight, ten, we're meeting her sister here. Okay. We're you ain't got no ID on you? Okay, what's well, your name? Tim. Tim what? Wait, why do I have to give you that? I don't understand that. Because I stopped you for a traffic violation. You no, have to get it. For what traffic? Violation? Not using turn single hundred feet prior. Are you kidding the, me? Did I commit a crime? You That's traffic offense. Okay. No, we're not here, answering. You weren't even here, behind us. There was another car no, behind us. We're not answering that. Seventeen here answering. with me. Here, I've got two people that want to argue. I'm not trying to argue with you. Okay. You can either a give me your license. I need to speak to your supervisor. Okay. He's on his way, and he's got to tell you the same thing. You give me your ID. Literally meeting my sister and my nieces. Okay, and that's. Hey, listen, can I, can I explain something to you guys? No. It's a traffic okay. violation, okay? What was the violation? There was not using turn signal 100 feet prior to the turn. Oh, okay. sir, you, you were behind, behind us. The car I was right behind, behind the same us. car and watching. Yeah, how would you know if I had used my turn signal? Because can, there's these red. I used my turn. I, I hit there my turn signal when we were almost a block away. I promise you, bud, I'll watch you. We're not. I'm not doing it. I beg to differ. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so I need your license, register, no, proof, insurance. Okay, well, and I'm gonna tell you one more time. If you don't give it to me, you're obstructing my official no, business, well, and I will place you. Not a crime. Yes, it is. No, it's not. Yes, it is. Not, okay. Not identifying okay. myself is that's not fine. a crime. Wait till my fuck supervisor shows up because I'm you're telling you exactly the thing. Okay, the here's the thing. It a big issue. Right it's getting recorded right now. You're I, good. I hope so. For okay. Both of our safety. It is for both of our safety. So. Either we can A. Not, uh, no. not answer any more questions. Okay, that's fine. You don't have to answer and you're obstructing official business, so you will be placed under arrest for obstructing official that. business, We're okay? So you can either A, give me your information. If they arrest me, you can come bail me out, but it's going to be an unlawful arrest. No, it's not. not did you know that. Did you know questions. that. Please, please Go ahead, let me, let me hear it. Nope. Sir, I don't have to provide it. I don't. No, no, no. Yes, you do. No. You are no. driving. The Supreme Court has ruled on this many times. Okay. okay. Listen to me. State of Ohio's law, yeah, you have to give me your information. You are operating a vehicle that I stopped you for a traffic violation, okay? That's how it goes. We're not even you weren't even behind us. us. Hey, I had my blinker right on. Under units. Why are you I used my blinker. Here? I'm about to make a swing one. I used my blinker at the gym, sir. How is that not okay. 100 feet away? So you can either step out of the car. I'm not stepping out of my vehicle. Mm. Okay, you can give me your I'd information. Like to close my door too. No, you're not closing your door. Well, you're you. you're all up inside my property right now. No, I'm not. Yes, so you can either. Here's the thing. You can either a give me your information or you are getting placed under arrest no. for operating and not give me your information, okay? You can record all you want. Sir. That's obstructing law, sir. official business. Sir. I think you know the law. We've I don't know the law. Okay. He's not wanting to give me his information. He's obstructing. That's We're not obstructing, him, okay? No. So you can step out. Sir, don't no. put your hands on me. I want your supervisor. I want your supervisor. Whoa, 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 whoa. Hey, hey, hey. I'm not. Stop it. What the fuck? Stop. Oh, my God. Hey, what the fuck? You get back. Of course, baby. Get back. Get your camera on, please. Get back in the car. You no, she's staying here. She's staying here. Fair? I don't, I don't care. care. I don't care. Wait, I don't care. Stop. I don't care. Stop. I don't want to take her away. I don't want to keep her. Stop. 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 She's just right here. She's meeting me here. Where? Shut up. Shut up. Are you the supervisor? Put your feet in the car. Are you the sergeant? Shut your mouth. I asked to speak to a supervisor. I am. Put in the car. I will be right there. I hope you're recording this. Stay in the car. No one's going to have resisted or anything. What the hell is this about? He's up. He's up. Stand up. Are you kidding me? He's up wrong on your knees. I'm not going to move. Sir, right, that's fine. No I want the supervisor. That. That's all I asked for. There is no that's all I asked need for. You know what there's no, no need for? Crime was committed. That's a traffic violation. Sir, you no no okay, he's hundred. gonna take in you or two. Oh, I didn't do anything. Are you I don't the supervisor. In the tri-state area, whispers of misconduct, corruption, and outrage have spread since the emergence of an autodidactic constitutional law scholar determined to expose the dark side of law enforcement. Enter. Chile de Castro. Chile de Castro, who launched his YouTube channel Delete Laws in 2021, 
has attracted over 369,000 subscribers by offering discussions, dashcam and bodycam footage, and his perspective on American law enforcement. Following a message from an Ironton resident reporting police misconduct involving the Ironton Police Department, Mr. DeCastro made an appearance in Ironton. Since then, he has been consistently uploading videos that feature him confronting police officers, sharing accounts of incidents inside the Lawrence County Jail, and conducting interviews with individuals accusing the Ironton Police Department of misconduct. After uploading a video to YouTube on March 21, 2022, documenting his initial visit to Ironton, his presence gradually gained recognition. Over time, his videos started to gain traction and attract more viewers from the tri-state area. Mr. DeCastro revealed that his phone has been inundated with emails and messages from numerous individuals in the tri-state region who claim to have experienced mistreatment by the police. On November 14, 2023, I had the privilege of interviewing Chile de Castro regarding his extensive investigation into the corruption present within the Ironton Police Department. During our interview, we delved into the first five episodes of his newly released 15-part series, where he provides a detailed account of his experiences upon arriving in Ironton, Ohio back in March of 2022. I want to stress that what we're dealing with here is truly extraordinary. It's a story that absolutely needs to be told. A powerful illustration of widespread corruption within a small town police department. So when we go into episode one and we talk about Tim and Sarah, Sarah had reached out to me maybe four weeks before I went and sent me a video of a cop stalking her, following her around. His name is Blankenship. And he had been stalking her and following her around. And I saw the video and I was like, yeah, you know, I get a lot of videos. People send me of cops stalking them. I was like, you know what? I want to help you. And I was on tour across the country helping people. At the same time, though, you know, I, I needed a little bit more. And then she calls me maybe a week later. She's been arrested now and pulled over for having a wrong color car. At first, I didn't even believe it. I had to see it on video myself. Then she calls me again. At this time, I'm in Dallas. I'm helping another guy help him get his, his case situated. And then, then she sends me a video of the police pulling her over for not using a blinker within 100 feet of a stop sign. But we know that's not true. We know it was made up. And it's the same cop who's stalking her. He tells her to be a woman and, and, and own it and get out of the car. At that point, I was in Dallas, Texas. I called her. You heard it on the episode one. I said, I'm 15 hours away. I'm driving there right now. I'll be there by Monday morning. Hello? Okay, Sarah, I'm leaving here tomorrow morning. It'll take me 12 hours to drive to Ohio. So, uh, well, I live in Kentucky, which is right you, across know, the river. I know, I, know, yeah. I know you live in Kentucky. I know where you live. I got, got everything you. all mapped out. So, <laughs> this is just all a right. phone call I, to let you know that I'm on my way. I'll see you in less than 24, 48 hours. Okay? I appreciate you so much. I need, so get, much. Get all, your, get all your videos in order so that we can go got over you. them as quick as we can when I get there, okay? Okie doke. Okay, what's your name? Tim. Tim, what? Wait, why do I have to give you that? I don't understand. That. Because I stopped you for a traffic violation. You no, have to get For what traffic? Violation? Not using turn signal 100 feet prior. Are you kidding the... me? Did I commit a crime? I need to speak to your supervisor. Okay, he's on his way, and he's got to tell you the same thing. You give me your ID. Step out. Sir, no. don't put your hands on me. I want your yep. supervisor. No. I want your supervisor. No. Whoa. No. whoa, 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 whoa. No. Hey, hey, hey. Come on. Stop it. Turn it. Hey, what the fuck? Get back. Court, Sir. Get back. Get your camera on, please. Get back in the court. No, Stay in the court. No one's going to have a resist or anything. What the hell is this about? Knees up. up. Stand up. Are you kidding me? Knees up, roll on your knees. I'm not going to move. Sir, right, that's fine. No I want the supervisor. That's all I asked for. There is no need for that. You know what there's no need for? No was committed. That's a traffic of violations. Okay, he's going to take it. Just ask you have to give me the law. You have to let me speak to your supervisor. That's the law. And he's coming, but he's going to tell you the law. Have you seen it? 
Step on out. I've done nothing wrong. You can step on out. Fine, but there's no Step back here with him, okay? You can stand back None. here with him, okay? You can stand back here with him, okay? Why did you do that? Okay. Turn up your hands behind your back. I've done nothing wrong. It's not wrong to please my case. What have I done? Come on. Please. 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 Here's my supervisor. What's up, bro? Oh, here's the thing. Okay, yeah. I won't. Yeah, I do. She said he's got two tattoos. One looks like a fist, one looks like a square. He's got a crown on one side and a square tattoo right here. they pull me over they better have a real good fucking reason Just don't argue different. with him. We just need to get back to work. So. Uh, traffic violations on just your vehicle. So, okay. um, so shut up. Just don't say that. Just shut up. Because I'm not well, talking to you. Is okay. that a lawful order? That is a lawful order. Okay. Can we, I don't like being interrupted. I don't like trying to be talked over to. What you're trying I to apologize. do is what she is doing. Okay. Okay? I apologize. So this is what I'm saying. I want you to take your seatbelt off. And you're coming back here. Me and you're going to talk like men. Instead of having your wife yell over the car. Oh, wow. Uh, I, I, I apologize. told you once, shut up. Okay, I just apologize. I told you once, shut up. Listen. Shut up. Yeah. No, sir, sir, no, no, no. sir. She's not no. breaking any laws. No, she's she's not... done obstructing me twice. If I give her a lawful order to shut up, then she is. said I apologize. Yeah. Answer yeah. open the door. Oh, who was talking to us, sir? No, no I said step out here. Take okay. your seatbelt off. Just Face step away. Out. Just do what he says, babe. But, God, sure. I want right there. I, I, I asked her, if we could de-escalate, that's I, all I, I said. And I de-escalated, and she like continued to really... yell and talk over top of us. Is she being under arrest here? Yes, she is. For talking? For obstruction and failure to comply Sir, with the she was just, order. she was just telling you the After issue. I told her to shut up and let me and you talk. Okay, I'll speak because to your she supervisor. was yelling over Are top you of you. Yes, go ahead, talk to her. I'm sorry. I, I don't know how this escalated into all this. Okay. We've been stopped here in this town before for this, and well, he was, you were the one that stopped us. You guys have also made false complaints. Well, we haven't made any complaints. No, she she attempted to make a, a, a complaint. Yeah, but it was yeah. false. That was false. She got called out on it. What, what was the complaint? The what was the complaint? I'm, I'm not exactly. The complaint there. was about us being stopped and me being yanked out of my car and held in jail for three days. When to, and my family told him and that I didn't have a bond when actually I did. The bondsman came. Well, and that, that has nothing to do with us. Exactly. Well, that well, that was what she was attempting to complain about. We didn't know who to go to with that complaint. I'm gonna put this back in my glove box. Oh God! She faints. She she faints. Babe, babe. Yes, sir. There's no need for ambulance. I, I just scare I, really yeah, easy, I, and and, uh, and I understand that's what I you have to do. I need to get on my phone and, and cancel this delivery. Oh, 
this embarrassment. What happens here is Tim and Sarah are pulled over for not using a blinker or the wrong color of car. And when they're pulled over, as soon as that Blankenship, the older Blankenship, I think his name is Brendan or Brandon Blankenship, pulls over Tim and Sarah. He radios in that he's pulled over these people that they're stalking. Well, then immediately McKnight, who they knew stole the wallet and accused him publicly of stealing the wallet. Then McKnight, as you can see in the episode, he comes rushing there. Yeah. And then with Sarah in the passenger seat and Tim being harassed by Brandon, then McKnight walks up to Sarah's car door, opens her door, tries to open it, but it's locked as I teach everybody to keep their doors locked. And then he demands that they open the car door, immediately pulls her out and puts her in torture cuffs and shoves her in the back of the car of the pig of the pig patrol car and then at that point because sarah has low blood sugar and she scares very easily when they finally they leave her in those torture cuffs in the back of that car for 30 minutes and then when she finally gets out of the car she faints and then tim sees this he loves her he goes running over to help her and she's explaining to them it doesn't have to be this way you don't have to treat me like this but these people are demons they're evil they really are evil mcknight is evil i have so many stories about mcknight that i've never told because the people in that town if you tell me your story and you don't give me permission to air your story, even if I distort your voice, then I will not air your story. And Andre, I have hundreds of stories about the police in Ironton, Ohio on my phone. So McKnight, Blankenship, the Spooljeric brothers, one work for the Sheriff's Department, one work for the Ironton Police Department. They're all in Fouch. They're all in it together. The blue wall of silence from the Mullen Commission has never been more obvious. It's The blue wall of silence is happening in Ironton, Ohio right now. And by the way, it's still happening in Ironton, Ohio. been circled how many times now that means the third time and I can't fucking do it man I can't do it what seriously It was a turn signal and a stop sign. You just violation. did a U turn in the middle of the street. To catch up to you. To me, sir, I yeah. stopped. I stopped okay. immediately. Well, I'll just hop out here. I'm not. I need, an, I need an officer here, please. This officer has been following. 826. I'm not doing anything wrong. Uh, it's how it works. I'm going to ask you to step out. I'm going to tell you to step out. And then I'm going to force you to step out. You broke a traffic violation. Be a woman. Own up to it. We're here. You got ID on you? I told you what the traffic violation was. That was a turn signal. Doing a U-turn in the middle of the street for no emergency, you have to abide by the wall as well. And I didn't do anything. I stopped right there. Well, I'm writing you a citation for the turn signal. That's stop fine. Uh, I said just mark and hold our information. Um, so, uh, I, I think I had an interaction with you up here and you... You did. Yeah. You stopped me in front of Joe Lynn while I was part, putting my makeup on for a turn signal violation. That didn't happen. Okay. Uh, so, uh, I'm informing you that you are going to get a citation for the turn signal and a stop sign. So, uh, in the middle I of the I have you on video. That's fine. Following me, circling the block, coming around uh -huh. and finding me. And I am going to your superiors. There he is. Here I am. No, I'm going to your superior. Oh, okay. Her name's Chief Wagner. She's I know exactly today. who she is. I okay. spoke with Miss Wagner several times. Okay. They never do anything. What do you got? She stopped right the crosswalk. And then when she seen me, that's when she turned the turn signal on. There you go. Make sure you put a, a nice narrative on the background so you can reference it because I'm sure she'll take it to court. Oh, yeah.
And right when I got into town, the moment I got into town, it was almost like, like this feeling of like a boom, you know, I could feel the energy of the corruption that was on the street level there. And nobody there had ever challenged the police ever in the history of Ironton, Ohio. Nobody had ever walked up to them and said, you are a pig and I'm going to film you and I'm going to catch you being corrupt. Is that the police department right there? That is the police department. Well, God bless. Hello? Well, that's definitely a cop car and they got some stuff in there. So that's B. Pauly. That's a, this is a police interceptor. So I got there. I, I stayed at Tim and Sarah's the first night. I was slept on the floor for like four hours, got up, jumped in the shower. And then I got out of there and I went and checked into an Airbnb. But right away when I got there, I was driving my car with California plates on it. And this is a small town. Right away, as soon as I drove through town, 25 mile an hour streets, people are looking at me as I drive by. And I'm like... <laughs> I got a booger hanging on my nose or something. You know, it was just such a strange thing. And then to watch the videos of Tim and Sarah and the abuse they had gone through and the torture and the wrongful arrest and leaving Tim in jail for three days, telling his family he doesn't have a bond when he did. So these things were a catalyst for me to just stay there and keep going. How do I get access? I need to follow call that phone plan. number. Yeah. Step down there because we're getting ready to bring in Step bring down in there and in. make it call that phone number. In the history of you guys doing this, has anybody ever tried to take prisoners out of your hands? So that's uh, not going to happen today, then is it? I've, I've done well, then is it six years and I ain't never lost one. Right. And so I'm not going to start today right, you're, you're trying to take. Way, though, them I'm not in the way. You can shackled. walk right by me. I don't want you there. We I don't care if you want me here. This is a publicly hey, funded no, job. No, it's not. Go ahead, dude. L listen. Go ahead. I don't care. Go ahead. You don't know who I am. I don't care who you are. Okay, well, I can stand right here. Well, I don't know you're we're we'll bringing in I don't, I don't, don't want you there. You're doing. I don't care. I don't care what I you're don't doing. Care. You're in our way. I don't I'm not in your way. This the hell you ain't right. you're in my way. If you would answer the door, I would have I would have a comment. I'll step on this side. I'm not stepping anywhere. I'm waiting by this door. I'm waiting by this door, dude. And that's what I'm doing. No one's ever tried to attack you and take these inmates away, so just stop it. S settle yourself down. When they were taking the people who were in jail, because I don't want to call them prisoners, right. when they were taking those people out of the jail and taking them to the courthouse and walking them over to the bus, he walked up to me and demanded that I move from my position. And I didn't think that was right. I, why do I have to move? You have three or four cops here. You all have guns. I'm in front of the police department. These people are in chains. Why do I got to move? And so I told him, no, I'm not going to move. And then I'm not sure if you, if you really pay attention to the episode. Then when they opened the door and I saw that the door was like right behind me, I actually moved to the other side because I don't want to, I'm not trying to obstruct justice. I'm just trying to let him know that I am a free American and I can stand right there. Well, that wasn't good enough for him. Even though I moved out of the way to the left, then he said, you, get, you can't stand there. So then I said to him, how many times have people stolen prisoners from you? How many times have people escaped from jail right? here how many times and he's well i've never lost danny and i said well you're not gonna lose any today are you so settle yourself down and it was just it's the way the cops are in our country when sarah went to the police department to file her complaint against mcknight for stealing the wallet and when she went to the police department for file the complaint for blankenship stalking her pam wagner told her if you file a false police report on an officer you can go to jail for that and sarah a very passive demure person, she leaves and she never gets to file the complaint. When I heard that, I went down there to confront Pam Wagner and ask her what the deal was. Hey, I'm here to file a criminal complaint against Blankenship. I got him on video. You can see the video. Okay. And What's going on? He's harassing Sarah Page. I've got about 10 videos. If you're not the victim, I can take no complaint from me, but I have to have a complaint from her. I'm a, ci I'm a civil libertarian. She's Are you the chief? Are you Pam? I am. Oh, but she came here. You're Pam. There's, there's Pam Wagner. Yep. So she came here and what Pam said to her was that she would arrest her for filing a false complaint. That is not that, That's what that's you said. True. That's what you said, Pam. Don't lie. That's what that's, you said. I got it on video. I have it on video. I have so everything on video. So why can't she file a complaint? Why can't Sarah she file can, a complaint? She can file a complaint on anything she wants to. And I explained no, You said you would arrest her if she filed a complaint. That's what you said. No, I did not that's say that. That's what you said. That's what you said. Do you know what I do? Do you know what I did? Oh, I know what you do. I know everything about your record. I looked you all up before I drove all the way I, over here. I'm sure you did. So did you see Blankenship follow Sarah around six, eight times and pull her over? Did you see her wrist after he cuffed her up? Did you did you know he's been pulled over twice for not using the blinker? Twice? Did, and then you go to handcuffs for that? 
You want handcuffs for not using the blinker? Okay. When she came in here, uh -huh. what she said is she had it on video. She does. Well, she never showed me that video. What she did, well, and I told her, I said, well, we'll pull the body camera footage up. Okay. And we did. Right? We and, did. And you saw him circle around her 15 times and then put her in cuffs? Two, two times these people have been pulled over for not using a blinker, and two times they've been put in handcuffs. You know handcuffs are torture, right? I... That, Absolute torture. Okay. You've got the video of her being put in handcuffs. I've got I've got a wrist as well. No, no, no. You've got the I've video. I've got all the videos. Every one of them. There's okay. dozens of videos, Pam. They've been harassing these two people because they found a wallet. They didn't give it back. They stole the wallet. Your cops did. And then they've been harassing these people for two years. And you guys have been picking on people who don't have the brains, the charisma, or the knowledge to actually take you on. And that's why I'm here, Pam. Okay. And that's what I'm going to do. Okay. Because let me tell you something. You know whose head's going to roll getting fired? Yours. Okay. Because of what you've been covering up for two years. It's disgusting, Pam. It's disgusting. How could you even stand here and not feel one ounce of sorrow? Why don't you just say you're sorry? For what? For allowing Blankenship to totally harass Sarah. When Sarah came in here... You said you would arrest her for filing a false police report. That's not what was said. That's what she told me you said, Pam. That was not what was said. What'd you say then? I told her she could fill out any paperwork she wants. And? And she said she had it on video. And mm -hmm. I said my officers have it on video as well. Right. And did you look at the video, Pam? Absolutely, and you yes. watched. So, so, she's saying she actually saw the video. Because what you guys have done is criminal. Are you an attorney? I don't have to answer your questions. Here's, no. what I, here's what I do have to do. file civil litigation. Get, no, I'm not leaving. I'm in a public space. I'm not going anywhere. I, I can, this is not McDonald's or Walmart. You can't trespass me for standing here. Are you going to walk away from the meeting now? Is that what you're going to do? You're going to flee? You're going to run and hide? Or do I get to meet with Blankenship now? There's no one here but me. Yeah. So you're holding this place down then? Uh, there's no one here. I don't even have a clerk here. Let me ask you. Instead, instead of you and I battling, are you I'm not battling because oh, I have oh, nothing to battle oh, over. Oh, 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 you're, you're about to find out. But okay. let me ask you a question. Instead of this, are you actually going to do anything? And so the first thing that I saw on Pam's face when I confronted her was fear. I looked her in the eyes and I realized right away she's terrified. And that's most of these pigs that I take on. As soon as I step up and let them know that I'm a scholar and that if you play games with me, I'll file a lawsuit against you and I won't stop until it's done. And Pam knows that now because I'm not stopping. She was afraid. She was so afraid I could see her quaking. Like, I don't know if you can see it on camera or not, but she's quaking. Her lips are quivering. Her body's quivering. She's very scared. I remember that she lied to me and told me that she did not tell Sarah that she would arrest her for filing a complaint, which later in another episode comes out that she did. When I was, I was waiting for Waldo in the waiting room of the, of the court. It's a public area. I have every right to be there. Here's the worst part about it is that when I was recording, talking live to almost a thousand people, as soon as I turn on my camera in Ironton, thousand people come on. Whether it's two o'clock in the morning or two in the afternoon, thousand people on my live stream. Those are mostly the residents of Ironton, Ohio, because they're so sick of it. So sick of the cops corruption. So when I was in the courtroom waiting to talk to Kevin Waldo, this is still episode three, then a bunch of bailiffs and courthouse personnel came in the room and said, hey, you can't be in here. But yes, I can. Yes, I can. I'm not disrupting anybody. This is just a public room. But they wanted to dominate me. And I said, no, I'm not leaving. And so then I, they eventually crescendos to where they grab me. And when they grab me, this is the worst. You know how on your iPhone, there's a little button up here that, that, that turns your phone on or off? Well, as soon as they grab me, my hand is jarred and click, I click the, the button off. I don't get a video of them grabbing me, but four of them all grab me. And I'm not sure, even though I'm the way I am, I'm not going to fight anybody. I'm, I'm not going to have a fist fight. Like I'm not, I'm not a juvenile. I'm not a barbarian. You know, if someone wants to fight, you guys can set it up, go, go get a mat and go somewhere and have a fight, but I'm not going to fight any sort of government official in their official capacity. So when they grab me, they drag me out. And right when I get out, I get my phone back on because I'm still running live. And then I don't get to get a video of it all. And then as soon as they grab me and drag me out of that room, I then say, I'm going to sue you for putting your hands on me because that's against the law to grab somebody who hasn't done anything wrong. And none of the guards or bailiffs will tell me who anybody is. And they're all lying and saying, we didn't see anything. Who grabbed you? It was surreal. It was honestly like, how do you think you're a good person? 
Like, how do you, how do you go to sleep at night? How do you hug your children and say, daddy loves you when you're such a piece of trash that you would lie? The woman there, there's a blonde woman who's a, a jail guard there. She was standing right in front of me when the four pulled me out. She was literally leading me out. And she said, when I asked her, she said, I didn't see anything. So this is, this is Sarah Page right here. She went to go and, and pick up a friend and What's been going on here at Ironton Police Department is for two years after Sarah found out that the cops took her wallet, she went back and complained at the police department. And now ever since then, she's being stalked. So she's, she went to go pick up a friend right here. I want you guys to see that. Cop passes, that's th that same officer Blankenship. So you guys can see exactly what happened. I never, ever come around. Dude, I tell you, they look for my car. They do. They watch for your car. They have to. Like, there's no fucking way. Dude. There's never police around here. Unless somebody called, like, an anonymous drug line on me for smoking weed. Which is, shouldn't even be illegal. They can't do. do that, I know dude. they can't do That's that. That's hearsay. They'll still do it, you know. They'll still and look, there he is, right behind me. Following you? Yep. Yeah. He's definitely following And I definitely you. got that one. They're harassing me, is exactly what it is. If he comes back around, they're definitely stalking you. If he was just driving through. But here's the thing, where the fuck is he going is the thing. Like, there's... That guy's pulled me over before. He pulled me over before and I gave him fucking hell for it. And I told yeah, him to exact, get his supervisor the over exact here. cop that was just following. Yeah, yeah. He pulled me over right back here in front of Joanne. Why did he just come back around? He's me? harassing me. I'm sorry, Caleb. I will take you to the hospital, like, literally, dude, just as quick as I possibly can. But I'm pissed off because there he goes again, and he's going to fucking circle around. Yeah, he just what keep he circling? Yep. Why? That doesn't make any fucking sense. Like, that makes no logical sense why he would be circling the block over and over I'm, again. I'm calling the police department. That's no, exactly what I'm going to do. No, don't call the police department. <sighs> can't take it, man. I'm sorry that I had you come to iron. No, don't be. It's not your fault, buddy. N not at all. They can't get me on the fucking car color shit again. Oh, well, your car comes back as a tan vehicle. I'm going to go out here and have a seat. Uh, this is one public building. I'm just going to finish. No. Well, how many times now? That may be the third time. And I can't fucking do it, man. I can't do it. What? Seriously. over. I didn't do anything. Before I started my journey, when I took off on the road and I went from California to Maine and back twice, all bunch of states, before I did that, I had this belief in my heart and in my head that judges were custodians of justice. You can read this in Federalist Paper number 78. And so because I had read the Federalist Papers, I had this idea that these judges were, the, the proper words are custodians of justice. And so I thought that being in such a small town like Ironton, I would go talk to the local judge in a tiny little town, explained to him that the cops were harassing and stalking Sarah. And he would then take action as a custodian of justice because if people are arresting her and she's going to court in his courtroom, then he can do something about this. I had this delusion in my head that judges were something good. Judges are the worst part of our country. And you can tell that by the prison industry. From 1968, from Terry versus Ohio to today, it's 300,000 people in 1968, two and a half million people today. So do the math on that. Almost 10 times the amount of people in prison. So at first I had this idea. And then pretty soon I started to placate out. I'll get into those later episodes later, but pretty soon I started to say out 
loud. Oh, you know, Waldo's a great guy. He's really going to jump in on this knowing he's a corrupt pig sucker. He's a, uh, he's, let me, let me say it again. He's a corrupt cop sucker. 100%. That's what he is. That's what he is. Back the blue till it happens to you. And then you'll call me and you'll say, man, I was a big cop supporter. And then they beat me up and hurt me and they put their knee in my neck. Well, I need your name, sir. You still have a badge on. It's, it's the it's the federal badge ID policy of police. Sit down before you do end up in jail. He threatened to put me in jail for not breaking any statute. That's the tyranny here in Ironton. I mean, what a clown! What a clown! What an absolute clown! And he walks around like he thinks he understands the law. The wheels of justice take time to turn, but they will crush him. See, these guys are used to sovereign citizens. They're not used to a guy who's for law and order. There's a big difference. Oh, do you think it's funny? Do you think it's funny? I think it's awful funny. What do you think is, wait, what's funny about it? I just want to know. What do you think is funny? Just curious. What do you think is funny? I think it's funny, yeah. What's funny? Where you're acting. I'm here because there's people who are being stalked, harassed, and arrested five times now by the Ironton Police Department. I'm here for liberty and justice. Well, well go down and tell the Ironton Police Department that. What are you telling me? I already for? did. Well, then. I'm here for Sarah's uh, court hearing at 4 p.m. Who's, who's hearing? Sarah Page. I'm here for her court hearing at 4 p.m. What's she arrested for? She's been, she's been pulled over twice for not using a blinker. And then she was arrested for not telling the cop, giving her ID as she was a passenger in the car, which again is unconstitutional. You have a right not to identify unless there's probable cause been established. Okay. I mean, aren't you for law and order? Yeah, I am. Me too. We agree. Mm -hmm. Aren't you for America? Don't you love this country? Yeah, are you? Yes, 100%. And <laughs> we agree. Okay, so then when the Ironton Police Department, did you hear what he just said? He said, sit down or he'll arrest me. Do you agree with that? Do you think that's right? Well, yeah, you ought to sit down. No, no, but do you think that... See, you, when, you, when you invade someone else's space... Invade? Yeah. I'm a free citizen. This is a public space paid for by the taxpayers. This isn't your space. This is our this space. This is my space. I'm not sitting I'm, on, I'm I'm not sitting sitting right on your here. lap. This is my space. If you haven't noticed, sir, I haven't raised my voice or cursed a single person. I don't care. But you, I asked you a direct question. He threatened to arrest me because I didn't sit down. Do you think that's right? You think someone should be able to tell you to sit down or they'll arrest you? If you're aggravating somebody, yeah. So, so aggravation is now is a law? It could be. It could be. It could be. I don't know. Is that really how you see law and order? I don't, I don't know if it is or not. So let me explain the difference between anarchy and law and order. Okay, anarchy is when you can make things up as you go and, and arrest people for statutes that don't exist. Rule of law is there's statutes and codes that are written that would mean there's arrestable offenses based on probable cause. We are the power in this country. So that means I have a chance to redress my government and come in here with my First Amendment right and film everything here. This is, this is well, the, that's what you're doing. So what's the deal? Well, what's the deal? I was, I I would, the deal. well, now I'm going to sue that guy who touched me, Mark Harmon, and I don't know the other guy's name. What's his name? Huh, I didn't see nobody touch you. See, this is the definition of tyranny when they hide who the personnel are. I asked him his name and badge number. He's violating the 2019 Federal Badge Transparency Act. So he's violating the law. Not him, the other gentleman who didn't give me his name. I have a right to file a complaint, to, to, to go through all administrative options, and then file a civil rights lawsuit. I have that right. And he, they can't grab me because they don't want me in the clerk's office. That's against the law. You can't put your hands on me. Just like I can't touch you, I can't touch him, and I can't touch him. I can't put my hands on people. It's rule of law, sir. Okay. Well, you said you respected it, but then you said he should be able to arrest me for aggravating him. When I, I didn't... said you was aggravating. In which way? How have I, I, I wasn't here. Have I cursed? Have I cursed you out? You were in the room. You saw him grab me. No, I must have had my head turned. I don't know. You must have, had, you must have had your head turned? You didn't see him grab me? No, I did not. Well, the video will show that you did see it. Well, good. Which I is... Mean, that tickles me to death. I don't wow. Care. Just atrocious. The rule of law is the Constitution, is the Bill of Rights. Now, each state across America has created tyrannical laws that go against the people, against our freedom and against our liberty. And so when he said that they could arrest me or he would agree with arresting me for annoying somebody, then I knew I was absolutely in the depths of tyranny. This is where we meet. We finally talked to Sarah Page, and she's explaining how the officers in Ironton, Ohio, have been harassing her every time she she's in town. So she's not from Ironton, Ohio. She actually lives outside of Ironton, correct? 
right across the bridge in Kentucky. And but she travels often because she has family in Ironton, correct? Well, the tri-state area, Ohio, Kentucky, and West Virginia, there's this one little section right there where all the states combine in one place. And it's just kind of one big community, but it's split up, of course, because of state lines across the bridge, across the river. And so Sarah Page had to travel to be able to do her job, to be able to do her door dashing. She had to travel in Ironton, which deathly terrified her. And so in episode five, I finally get Sarah in front of the police department because we're going to file a complaint against these cops who've been doing this to her. And I've already been there for, for a couple of days now. And so remember, I'm learning as I go. And so I have learned something very important. And a lot of people will see it and say, man, why are you talking over her? Why are you victims of police brutality when they start to bear their soul? As you know, Andre, because you've been interviewed so many of them, they'll often go off a course and go over here or go over there because their emotional state, number one, doesn't want to talk about that. They'll go to this side. They'll go to that side. And I want to talk directly about the issue. But now that I've interviewed hundreds of victims of police brutality, now I know I have to like a bowling alley. I have to stick bumper lanes in there and say, no, come back to center right now. Tell me this exactly. And then I say, hold on a second. Let me sum this up for the audience. You know, because people, when they first watch it, you're going to think, man, he's kind of coming off like he's rough. Well, you haven't interviewed anybody who's been stalked, harassed, arrested, persecuted by the cops and prosecuted. So I have to try to keep her on track. And so that's what you'll see in episode five is me saying, no, focus, hold on, wait, jump, go to this, tell me this. And so you'll see it, right? You can see that I'm literally leading the horse to water. Have these guys been just absolutely stalking you and harassing you? I, I don't know what else to call it other than lose that. lose the mask, will you? Yeah, sure. Absolutely. Um, two years this has been going on. I work over here. I have family over here. It's hard not to come across the bridge. We're a tri-state area. Uh, everywhere is right across from each other. And these officers, every time I'm here, they make their presence known. They follow me, they smirk, they intimidate. I mean, it's pathetic. They act like a bunch of middle school boys. And it, it's to the point that I do fear for my safety when I come over here. And these are supposed to be the people that you go to for help to protect you. Tell them what happened two years ago. Just give them the basis Lord, of what so, happened. Um, my fiance and I went to the dollar store uh, when I had bag, you know, hands packed full of bags, leaving the store and I had his wallet in my hand. Well, I guess in the midst of putting the groceries in the car and leaving, I dropped his wallet. Well, I hadn't noticed it at the time, so I left and went across the street to the CVS. Uh, once getting there, I kind of noticed across the street that a police officer has pulled into the spot that I just left. He, he was talking to somebody in a van, and then after we pulled out, he circled around and pulled into our spot and opened his door and reached out. And we didn't know what he was doing yet until she was like, the wallet Babe. and I'm like I don't have it and we went to the dollar store and the security camera showed walking out the door with it so from the door to the car okay so when we got in the car it fell on the ground we assume and we saw him pick something up so she went to the police department okay. Tim works building pools he puts in pools so it's only a seasonal job and then they do Uber Eats or they do DoorDash and so these folks they're they're paycheck to paycheck so what happened was Tim and Sarah had gone to the CVS there in Ironton and they had just got their paycheck. So a $300 or $400 paycheck for people who don't have any money is a lot of money. I know that because I, I don't come from a rich family. So three or 400 bucks is a lot of money. So they go into CVS and they're happy. They're buying all their stuff that they get to get because they got payday. And then they walk outside with their items. They get into the car and then they drive away. Sarah has her wallet, Tim's wallet in her hand when she leaves the CVS with all the bags. And then when they get in the car and they drive away, they're going to another store to spend some money because they finally have some money. And Sarah's looking around and she can't find the wallet. So they realize, well, I, she knows Sarah, Sarah's a pretty sharp tack. They say, you know, I had the wallet in my hand when I left CVS. So they go back to where they were. And in the space that they were parked is an Ironton cop named McKnight. So they go over, they look there and then McKnight leaves before they can get there and start researching. As soon as he leaves, they pull into the same spot they were. They're looking around for the wallet. There's no wallet. So they go to the Ironton Police Department and they say, hey, you know, we think one of your officers picked up our wallet. You came right here. I, I did. I, I came directly here. I, I didn't know who it was. So when I came here, there was a gentleman here and I, I explained to him the situation. I said there was an offer, officer that was just at the dollar store. Could you please have him dispatched here? And he said, well, what for? I said, I believe he picked up my wallet and I would like to get it back and right. would like to do that. What does he say when he pulls in here? So he, he says, how can I help you? I said, well, sir, you know, I'm pretty sure I just watched you pick up my fiance's wallet and I, I thought I would just get it back. 
well, I don't know what you're talking about. I don't have your wallet. I said, sir, you just left the dollar store parking lot, and I'm pretty sure you picked up our wallet. We'd, we'd like to have it back. And look in his lap for like 10 seconds. Like, he had to have been looking through it. Right. And, and, and there was hundred and thirty dollars in it. Whoop de doo. No, not whoop de doo. You, you you told me earlier you make fifteen bucks an hour. Yeah. So yeah. hundred and thirty bucks is a yeah, full day's wages. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Is that correct? Yeah. So Absolutely. you're not rich. You're not, you're not rich. Oh, no, we're like paycheck day. to paycheck. So hundred and thirty dollars is a lot of money. Dude, we can barely keep our car on the road. <laughs> right. Our right. So then so then what happens? I said, Sir, honestly I thought you would have integrity and give it back. He says, Well, I don't know what to tell you. I didn't take it. And well, uh, even if I did find it, there's not gonna be any money in it. And immediately, I was like, okay, well, obviously, he took it. I mean, said, you know what you're doing is accusing an officer know, of the law. Of theft. I said, I'm not accusing you, sir. I'm saying I watched you get it and I needed it back. And they're not accusing him. They just think maybe he found it. And so, can you give us back the wallet? Because we know we dropped it right here and then we saw you right there. So, can you please return the wallet? That turns into, are you accusing an officer of stealing your wallet? And then Tim and Sarah are like, well, if, if, if the wallet was there and the copper was there, then where's the wallet? And then the cop says to them, well, even if I do find a wallet, there's not going to be any money in it. So there was over $200 in the wallet, 150, 200 bucks, something like that. I can't remember the exact amount at this point, but they took that wallet a year in advance. And then after they took the wallet, Tim and Sarah went down to file a complaint at the police department. Almost a year later is when all the stalking and arresting and harassing and pulling over for the wrong color car twice and the no blinker twice. And the fifth time Sarah was pulled over, she wasn't even driving. So let's jump, Sarah. So so, so she doesn't get the wallet back. He takes the 130 bucks. He takes the wallet. And then... He pulled out and followed me all the way across town. Conveniently, he pulled me in to the place where I purchased my vehicle. But he said his reason for the stop was that it came back as a tan vehicle. Okay, so this is the jalopy. Personally, I think that it is a grayish color but it does have a tan undertone, if you want to call it that. But yeah, it looks more gray or silvery. She was pulled over because he ran her plate without probable cause, which is a violation of the law. And then he said he pulled her over because her car's coming back, not tan, but silver or whatever the BS he made up was. He pulled her over for saying that her reg didn't come back with the right color of car. That's what she was pulled over for, for the wrong color car. And, and what happens? He wrote me a ticket after I proved that was well, incorrect. He wrote a ticket because I had a mask hanging from a rear view mirror. Right, he wrote her a ticket for that because you were sitting in the passenger seat and they wanted yeah, to identify. Yeah, they wanted to ID me and I told him, look, I'm a passenger, you can talk to her. They had like six cops around the car. So just so you guys know, there's a Supreme Court case that allows the police to read your license plate and run your license plate whenever and wherever your car is in a public space. And so what they do is that they see Sarah's car and they run the license plate and it comes back as a gray or a tan car. I can't remember which one it is. Now the car is a mix kind of between gray and tan. It's an old car. This is an old jalopy. These folks don't have any money. The car's 15, 20 years old. It's a thousand dollar car, you know, $2,000 car maybe. And so the cops run her license plate and it comes back as a silver car or a tan car. And so then they pull her over on the idea that it's the wrong color car on the registration. And then when they go to give the registration, they tell, they tell them that they're giving a fake registration registration because the color of the car on the registration doesn't match the color that they're seeing. The car is almost 20 years old, maybe even 20 years old. And so the sun over time will slightly mutate and change the color of a car. We know this, especially classic car owners. And so they pull her over for that. And then eventually she'll, she'll be arrested, put in torture cuffs. And then they let you guys go. And then what happens after that? Uh, it was pretty quiet for a little bit, but then after that, a few months passes. We came over and helped my mother-in-law move some furniture and we're traveling back through town to meet my sister at the CVS. We passed this guy, he's got his nose sticking out of the, of the car wash. As we pass him, he sees our vehicle and literally immediately pulls out and he's like three cars back. He follows us until he, he turns off, speeds down another street and tries to get closer behind us. And, and he, he gets like one car, but now he's got one car between us. And he's weaving back and forth. And when we pull into CVS, I used my turn signal at the gym, right? It's like almost a half a block away. And I knew he was back there. I knew he was going to pull us. I pulled in. We got out of our car. He hadn't pulled in yet. The car that was in front of him stopped, and it took him a minute to get in the parking lot. We were halfway across the parking lot. Tim, why did he pull you over? He said he pulled me over uh, for uh, <laughs> God, God, I got a brain fart. Yeah, 100 feet prior is what he said. Tim, what? Wait, why do I have to give you that? 
don't understand. Because I stopped you for a traffic violation. You no, have to why? get it. For what traffic violation? Not using turn signal 100 feet prior. Are you kidding the, me? Did I commit a crime? I need to speak to your supervisor. Oh, oh whoa, whoa! Ah! Hey, hey, hey! I'm not uh, He drops his gun clip. Bullets go falling everywhere. He grabs his taser immediately because she comes out the uh, the driver's side because she thinks they're, yeah, they're crying. I, I thought they they're, were going to shoot him. She saw a gun clip hit the ground. She thought they had a gun out. Court, baby. Sir! Get back. Get your paper on, please! Stay in the car. Stay in the car. No what the hell is this about? He's up. Uh, one of the supervisors show up and I said, are you a supervisor? He says, no, but you got the right to remain silent, so fucking do it. So then the other supervisor shows up while I'm in the back of the cruiser, but only after the officer pulls him to the side and lies his ass off to him about... He changes his story so many times. In and the then video. do they take you to the dungeon? Oh, yeah. For, how, uh, how long are you in jail for? Three days. How long are you in cuffs for? Oh, a good, what, 45 minutes? 45 yeah. minutes in handcuffs. Yeah. And then so when he takes in the dungeon, are you allowed to take the car and leave? Oh, no. Uh, he, he They held me, too. I actually got put in the back of two different cruisers. In handcuffs? A, a, in handcuffs. Okay. You can stand yeah. back here with him, okay? Why did you do that? Okay. Well, don't put your hands behind your back. I've done nothing wrong. It's not wrong to plead my case. What have I done? They took them both to jail for not using a blinker. She tried to bail me out the next day after I got her bailed out. My mom came bail her out. She tried to come bail me out. They told her that I had a holder or a warrant or something. They lied. I didn't have any of that. Shit. Right. So what happens here is when they arrest him, they put him in the dungeon for three days. But the next day, she goes down to the jail and says, I want to get my boyfriend out. And they say that there's a hold. They can't get him out. That was a lie. They left him in there just to leave him in there. Is, it my, is that true? Absolutely. Yeah. In episode five... You hear him explaining he went to jail for three days. Yeah, Sarah goes to bail her boyfriend out. The Ironton police lie and say there's a hold on him. And you, we find out that this is a blatant lie. Can you explain how, how we found out this was a lie and why did they lie about this? What, what What's going on here? It's a corruption system where they're all in it together. The Lawrence County jailers are in on it with the Ironton cops. They're in on it with the Lawrence County Sheriff's Department. They're all in on it together. And so when Tim is arrested at that CVS and they drag him off to the dungeon, then the Lawrence County jailers, and I'm suing him, his name's John, John Chapman. It's in my lawsuit. John Chapman allegedly would have to have then colluded with the Ironton Police Department to then tell Sarah on the phone. They went down to the jail to get Tim out and they said, oh no, he's got a hold. So then he had to sit in jail for three days. And then when he gets out, later Tim would find out there was no hold on him. He could have got bailed out that night. Even one minute inside of the dungeon is horrific. Imagine your family trying to bail you out and John Chapman, along with the Ironton police, colluding together to make sure that you stay in that dungeon. And by the way, the jail gets paid on every eight hour cycle. And so then they, they go to court. They try to say what in court? They say they charge you with crimes. And what is the what is your public pretender say? Oh, God. <laughs> he says, well, here's what the prosecutor wants. Five days in jail. Five days in jail. He's going to drop the uh, he's going to drop the obstruction to a disorderly charge and right. one year probation. And then strongly, she said, no, I'm not going to take it. Right. Yep. And then what happened to your next hearing? <laughs> the next hearing, they, it was, he walks out and he says, here. here you go. You're out of here. Leave. The public it's pretender done. walks up to her who she has had no meetings with, who she did not show her the body cam and says, OK, it's done. You guys are done. You're free to go. They just offered her five days in the dungeon at the last hearing, but now it's all okay. It's all okay now. Everything's fine. They pulled him over for not using a blinker, and he goes to jail. E Police have discretion. They can tow your car. They can not tow your car. They can arrest you. They can not arrest you. From my perspective, Andre, you should not be arrested unless you are a danger to society or a danger to yourself. And we can establish that clearly because you've assaulted somebody else, because someone's bleeding, because there's a weak being babe because there's a man crying in the streets. The only reason you should be arrested in these United States of America is because you're violent to where you're actively destroying someone's property, breaking their house, breaking their stuff, or actively destroying another person physically. Yet they arrested Tim maybe for no license or no blinker, but they took him to the dungeon. And if you haven't been to the dungeon, then don't hack it till you try it. And then you'll become a subscriber. And then I'll get an email from you. Chili, please help me. I get hundreds of emails a day. Most of the time on the top line, it says, please help me. Nobody will help me. In the end, Brandon Blankenship was promoted to the position of captain within the Ironton Police Department, following Chief Pam Wagner's resignation. Rumors would circulate about his younger brother, Officer Chance Blankenship's alleged substance abuse problems, and ongoing abusive behavior towards others.
Robert Fouch, Sergeant Evan McKnight, and Captain Chad Gu remain active police officers within the Ironton Police Department. Jonathan Spoljarek, formerly a deputy for the Lawrence County Sheriff's Department under Jeff Lawless, would resign. Shortly after his resignation, a video would emerge revealing Spoljarek's violation of Kent Freeman's civil rights. Bradley Spoljarek, who was accused of drug dealing by Mr. DeCastro during his investigation, would be arrested six months after Mr. DeCastro left Ironton, Ohio. Bradley is currently serving a one-year sentence in the Lawrence County Jail for possessing meth and fentanyl. As mentioned previously, Chief Pam Wagner would resign just a few months after Mr. DeCastro's departure from Ironton. As for Sarah Page, she continues working as a DoorDash driver and striving to lead a meaningful life. Tim Lyons remains Sarah's fiance and continues to document police activities in Ironton, Ohio. Due to Chile de Castro's exceptional investigation, numerous officers mentioned in this video are no longer affiliated with the Ironton Police Department or the Lawrence County Sheriff's Office. In fact, some of these officers are currently incarcerated for the offenses they were rightfully accused of by Mr. DeCastro. It is truly astonishing to witness the tremendous impact that an educated and fearless individual can have when they persistently pursue justice. A couple things. Number one, I did have a lot of help. There was a lot of good people in Ironton who helped me. You know, Car Thief News showed up. Frickin' Media showed up. Uh, Michigan Constitution, Constitutional Crusader showed up in Ironton. So I did have some help. And then one of our old friends, both of ours, a guy named DPN who passed away this last year, he also helped me immensely. He covered what I was doing in Ironton. People just don't really understand the depth of the corruption that was happening there and how awful it was for Sarah Page and Tim Lyons. There, the officers who harassed Sarah the most were McKnight, the Blankenship brothers, Fouch, and then Chad Gu. Chad Gu was the supervisor on the scene and he approved of what was happening to Sarah. Okay, uh, Chad Gu is, is a new name I haven't heard before. You're going to learn about him in episode in season two. And not only that, Kevin Waldo, now I can't prove some of these things just yet. We're going to say allegedly. Alleg uh, al allegedly, Kevin Waldo. So you have to run for judge there. Kevin Waldo ran on this idea that they would do drug court, drug rehabilitation instead of putting people in jail. Well, then you find out that the prosecutors, the county commissioners, and the judges have ownership in over a dozen different rehabilitation clinics in Ironton, Ohio. So if you go to court and you get sentenced to, to drug re-education, you might be going to Anderson's because Waldo can't send you to his rehabilitation center. He sends you to Anderson's or to, I can't remember all their names anymore, but there's so many prosecutors, assistant prosecutors, and county commissioners. Deanna Holliday and her family, they own a rehabilitation center. So if you go to Waldo's court, he's not going to send you his. He sends you over to Deanna Holliday's. If you go to, and then if you go to, what's the other judge's name? I want to say Ballard. If you go to Ballard's courtroom, then he'll sentence you to Waldo's Rehabilitation Center. And all of this is for nonprofit. All of this is to help people. Meanwhile, people keep on getting arrested and keep on going to these rehabs for a year or two. And you know how much that costs? Like thirty dollars or $40,000 a month for the rehabilitation clinics. And then when they get out, they, of course, recidivate. They do chemicals again. And then they go back where? Not They go to jail for a second so they can the jail can get the money for six months. And then they go to rehabilitation clinic. And who's doing this? Judge Kevin Waldo. You can get chemicals in jail. How do you get the chemicals in jail? The guards. The guards. Guys like Mark Harmon. I don't know if Mark Harmon does that, but that's how the drugs get into jails is through the guards. It doesn't go in through the back of your booty where they bend you over, squat, and cough. No, that's not how the majority of the drugs get in. They get in through the prison guards and the cops. And we know that because Bradley Spoljarek is right now in prison for dealing drugs. He had 20 grams of meth and 8 grams of fentanyl on him. Can you explain who he is real quick? Bradley Spoljarek was an Ironton police officer who, when I went there, I called him out because he had been bullying and beating up people for so long. I have stories about Bradley Spoljarek on my phone that I can't release because those people are afraid of re retaliation. Bradley Spoljarek was the brother of Jonathan Spoljarek, who worked for Jeff Lawless's Sheriff's Department, the Lawrence County Sheriff's Department in that little tri-state area. And so Bradley Spoljarek, when I was there, I had got information that he was actually dealing drugs. So then when I said it out loud on my live stream, I really didn't think 
that later he would get arrested and go to prison for drugs. But I had several confidential informants who told me that Bradley Spiljarek was dealing drugs. Come to find out later that he was. So I'll say it right now. Blankenship's father is being accused of being one of the biggest meth dealers in that town and that he has couriers that work for him that both Blankenship brothers look the other way when they see those couriers driving through town. That's the information I have. I have it recorded on my phone from confidential informants. Bradley Spuljerick's in prison. Jonathan Spuljerick resigned after I exposed him. And Pam Wagner resigned shortly after I left Ironton. And I sued all of them. I'm still suing them now to this day.